Hey YouTube, Paul here with PathTech. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at why I switched from the Mac Pro or the, the Power Mac that I've had for many moons to a brand new PC. Let's check it out. Okay, so I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time, but uh, the problem was I had to buy the parts and get it all together, and that took a little doing. So, uh, first thing I want to share with you is that I did my homework. I spent probably three months uh, researching this. Uh, this is my first PC build, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, I fully intended to build it until the guys at Canada Computer said, we'll build it for you for 80 bucks and we'll give you a year's warranty on the build. So up here in Toronto, that made a lot of sense because um, this whole thing started, I saw a YouTube video uh, where Max Uriev was talking about building a video editing machine for $1,000 US. And so in Canada, that translated to about 2300 bucks to get what I have here today, but trust me, is worth every penny. So I'm going to walk you through step by step what I did, why I did it, and hopefully that will help you a little bit in your endeavors. So what I did was, after doing some research, I narrowed it down to two cases. I was either going to go with the um, NZXT 340 Elite case um, or uh, 750D from Corsair. And then when I actually went to buy the case, I saw this 780T uh, from Corsair and just fell in love with it. From a productivity standpoint, it has everything that I am ever going to need and then some. So, and uh, just in case you're wondering how I'm spinning this thing around with uh, one finger, um, I'll solve that mystery right now. <laughs> if you go to Home Depot in the fastener section, you can buy these Lazy Susan wheels. And they're like five bucks for the small size one. And this one is, I think it's about 12 to 14 inches and holds a thousand pounds in weight. So my PC, I actually have it sitting on a little stand and then I have it sitting on one of these and you can turn it effortlessly because I find um, nine times out of 10, I'm moving the machine back and forth, putting cards in and out of it. So these come in really handy. Home Depot, five, six bucks. You, you'd be glad you did. Okay. So the Mac here was getting a little bit long in the tooth. Four gigs of RAM, the machine, I've had it for a good 10 years now. You know, can't run Camtasia on it, Adobe Premiere, ripping video, and then, you know, going towards 4K video. So my needs were, as a photographer, videographer, instructional designer, I needed something that was going to run Photoshop efficiently. It's going to run Capture One Pro, uh, Adobe Premiere, Camtasia. Uh, so these kind of programs. And... So when I started looking at, you know, the cost of a new Mac, um, what it would cost to build the Mac version of this, it was like $5,000. And then we, <laughs> I just couldn't justify the cost. So quite simply, I didn't want to pay the Apple tax. And so I bought this case on sale for about 180 bucks here in Canada. And I'll walk you through the parts that I chose to build it. And so first of all was the chip. That was another motivator for me to build this machine. Um, Ryzen chip came out. It's half the price of the Intel chips. And for, you know, $400, I was able to get a Ryzen 1700X. So that is the chip that is in this machine. Okay, so that's the CPU. The motherboard is the Asus B350 Plus. Uh, motherboard and uh, again this is a terrific motherboard $134 you can't go wrong um, it, you know it works with the LEDs uh, powerful enough for anything that I'm gonna do and so it was pretty much a no-brainer and again I have to give a shout out to Max Uria because that's where this video that's where this build started from I saw his video first and then um, I also saw some of the videos that Paul's Hardware did, and I was thoroughly impressed. I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to build two or three of these things, even though I didn't build this one. Uh, I have done some tweaking, and I've added some RGB lights, and I put an extra internal hard drive in it. 
Um, but I'm pretty confident now that I can do it on my own. So, uh, but anyways, so that's the motherboard. That's the Ryzen chip. Um, the power supply that I used was EVGA uh, 750. The graphics card, GTX 1060. So because I'm not a gamer, and that's another sort of disclaimer I should come clean on. I, there's thousands of videos, how to build a gaming machine, blah, blah, blah. Um, this machine, it was for productivity uh, based 150%. That, that's what I wanted the machine for. So in Canada, GTX 1080 chip, is it's like a thousand bucks when you pay the cost and the tax. And so the 1060 was on sale, and so that's what I decided to go with. Um, and quite happy I did. The you know the rendering, and everything is great with it. I haven't had any issues whatsoever. Um, the RAM I used in the machine, it's 32 gigs of RAM, and it's Trident Z DDR4. Okay. And the boot SSD is a Samsung 960 uh, Evo. So even though I looked at Max Yuryev's video, um, some of his basic components, like he suggested the NZXT, the base case, which uh, se seemed a little, I don't know, hard to work with, to be honest with you. Um, and the boot SSD he was recommending, his optional boot SSD was this one, was a Samsung, and he said that it was a lot faster and it wasn't that much more money. So that was the reason for going with the, the 960 EVO. Um, I will probably at some point go to water cooling, but for uh, just getting started, I went with a Thermaltech uh, Contact Silent 12 CPU air cooler. And I've actually talked to a, a number of people, a number of technicians about the cooling on the PCs. And, and really it's for gamers, like liquid cooling is gonna make the greatest performance difference from what I understand. Um, if I was to swap out this cooler for a liquid cooler, I might see a one degree or two degree temperature reduction. Um, but where it's going to help you is if you're a gamer sitting in front of your machine for, you know, hours at a stretch, that's where it's going to re really help you um, and help save your CPU and extend the life. So, but that was why I went with the air cooler because for what I'm doing, rendering video from time to time, you know, probably the longest renderers I do will be an hour, hour and a half. And those are going to be few and far between. Most of my YouTube videos are 15, 20 minutes. Um, like if you're a YouTuber out there, you know what I'm talking about. So that was the reason for the air cooler. And then last but not least, because I'm so geared towards productivity, is if you notice on the front of the case here, and I have to thank Brian Glenn from Cigar Obsession, his YouTube channel, uh, he does the same kind of work I do. He's only interested in productivity. And I watched the build that he had done on a Corsair 650D case. And one of the things he mentioned was that, you know, he didn't want anything on the front of the case, no doors, because he's going in and out of it all the time with SD cards and compact flash cards, and that's me to a T. So as soon as I saw that, I went out and purchased the NZXT Aperture M uh, internal card reader. And I am gl so glad I did. I don't have to have the external, you know, the cable fiddle around and hold it. I can just punch the, the cards in and out of the front of the box. And uh, so far, it's been terrific. And the other thing I really liked about this case for productivity, on the top of the case, you'll see it has two USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports. It has a fan speed control. And your main power off button is like that on the, the automobiles they're using. And so far, I'm telling you, it's just a, a joy to use. Um, I set it up with Windows 10 Pro. So um, I'm probably like a lot of you guys. I go to, you know, you work all day on a PC, come home and then work on your Mac or surfing on your MacBook Pro. Um, so up until now, all of my YouTube videos have been done on a MacBook Pro laptop uh, with an i5 processor. So again, there's another reason to switch to uh, the Ryzen i7 processor. Um, the machine I use at work has dual uh, Xeon processors, 3652s, and I'm really curious to see when I start doing some heavy rendering on this machine how it compares. So uh, I'll probably do a follow-up video to this one to share that information with you as well. So another uh, aspect of this machine or another feature of this case actually was you just press the button and 
you've got full access to the fans on the front of the machine. And then there's, there's, there's lots of videos on YouTube on the 780TK, so I don't need to go through it in detail. But, you know, this setup here have an easy access, great airflow through the front of the box. It just made a lot of sense to me. And I'm a kind of a, a very pragmatic guy. Like, you know, I talk to the techs, I ask for advice, and I listen to what they say. And being extremely technical myself, um, you know, I can sort out the BS from the, the guys that are giving me good information and the folks at Canada Computers, they came through, you know, their information was really good. They built the machine. I could tell they did a good job. Everything was connected the way it should be. So, um, but this was one of the features that really caught my eye was, you know, easy access to the front. Um, this filter on the bottom. You know, you have a similar filter on the back of the machine to filter the air going to the power supply. So just attention to detail is uh, was, was something that really caught my eye. On the back of the machine, you have all the access ports that you're ever going to need. Um, for productivity plus you've got lots of PCI slots here um, you know USB 3, USB 3.1, USB 2 ports up the top here um, the only thing that I really didn't know or wasn't sort of savvy to is that when you go to a graphics card like this it disables um, your DVI port on the motherboard and so when I got the machine home, went to plug it, started plugging my monitors in, I couldn't get them to come out, so I had to phone and, and check and see what was going on. The guy says, oh yeah, well, when you switch to a graphics card like this, the HDMI ports take over. And this machine comes with four HDMI ports, so I could run, technically run four monitors off this. I mean, I'm running two now, two Samsung 24-inch monitors. Might at some point go to a third, but kind of unlikely. I mean, that's a lot of real estate with two 24-inch monitors, so I can't see myself needing anything else. Um, yeah, and then you've got your audio ports on the front, and you also have, on the top of the machine, you have a headphone and a mic port as well, so those are handy as well. And because uh, I typically locate the machine just about six inches off the floor on a little stand, it's very handy to put external drives, just push them down, really easy access. Okay, so let's take a look inside the case, and before we do, um, another feature of this case is the easy access panel. So this is a plastic panel on the one side, on the opposite side, it's a metal panel. And that gives you easy access to the back side of the motherboard, all your wiring, if you're going to do some housekeeping on the wiring. Um, you've got space for one, two, three SSD drives. And then around the other side, um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, three and a half inch bays. And I have one three terabyte drive, just purchased uh, a second one um, that I want to use to back up everything that's on here. And then I'll have another copy of it here and tons of space left over. Um, so yeah, just a great case for like space. And actually there's the two bays up top here. So I have the internal card reader, but you could put a CD writer reader uh, in the top as well, which I might do, but not really sure how much um, CD burning I'm, I'm going to do in the future. I haven't done much of it for the last three years, so uh, to be honest with you. So I'm really looking forward to this machine uh, meeting my needs for years to come. So I hope this short video helps you if you have any questions. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention was um, I'll show you some pictures of this, but I, I purchased the Deepcool RGB 360. And this is the RGB lighting kit, uh, one of the, the more popular ones, I guess. And uh, really happy with it as well. It comes with a little remote control and you can change the modes. That You can change the colors of the lights from red to green to blue and everything in between. And it just looks so cool. Um, being the black case, the theme color for this machine is red. So with the Asus motherboard and the Trident memory, um, the LEDs are red, the motherboard is red, and the lighting on the front of the machine and the top is all red. Um, and then you can switch the color. And the only way to change that out, you would have to change um, 
the actual built-in LEDs here to do that. So um, for me, it's kind of cool. When you look at it from the front, the two fans glow red, and then you can change the colors to your heart's desire using the, uh, the lighting kit, which was a piece of cake to install, just plugs into the power supply. So, you know, the message for this video is, even though I'm very technical and didn't do this build, I'm quite sure I could have done it, um, you know, if I had the time. Um, but, you know, plugging in a hard drive, putting in RGB lights, if I can do it, anybody can do it, man. So if, if you're on the fence thinking about whether you, you could do this on your own, uh, there's lots of people out there that can help you and give you good advice. So I hope this helps you. If you have any questions, um, I'll put a listing for the prices of the parts that I used. And uh, that's it for this one. Don't forget to subscribe and like us, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.